This is a homemade riddle. I've got a better one down in there too, but this is just the right size and it's eighth inch screen. And all I do is put a couple of scoops of sand. See how nice that comes out? Then I pick out the ladybugs that are in the sand, throw them on the floor. I think I'll put a little more fresh stuff in there. And at this point, I can dump the rest in there. Then I'll fill it up and start ramming. Here's my wooden bench rammer. Now I have to be careful that I have enough sand over the, uh, the pattern because you can damage a pattern if there isn't enough sand covering it, especially the plaster one. If I hit this, hit that with a rammer, it would crack, I guarantee it. Now the other thing is I like to ram evenly all the way around rather than ram in one corner because that shifts the pattern down to one end. ram that a little bit more now it's possible to ram it too hard you know the, the kids would do that sometimes they would ram it so hard and so long that the uh, flask would lift up off the molding board so I'll ram that just a little more off camera I'll put a little more sand in there and then strike it off smooth as a hound's tooth it's rammed and now I will strike it Did you notice how the whole flask slid on me? Now the reason it's doing that is because this is a Formica sink cutout with that fake granite there and it's just as slick as can be. So it was sliding on the, on the bars here on, on the molding bench. Now I'm going to flip this upside down and I, I never want to take the chance of a pattern falling out. So uh, to prevent that uh, I flip it over board and all. Now as I flip that over, I had to be very careful to not let that uh, follower board there or, or that uh, molding board slide on the pattern because if I did, it could literally damage or shear off my two plaster pins because those aren't very sturdy. Got more parting dust on here. Now I did put the uh, pattern off to one side so I have room here to work and, and uh, put my, my sprue and I believe I'll put the sprue on this end because eventually that's going to be the end that has the the uh, hole cut into the mold to pour the lead in so there'll be always some uh, imperfections and I don't care if I get them you know right in this area here also I'll have to cut two little uh, marks in there so that I can grip the plaster and pull it out of the sand because I cannot drill a hole in it you know for a screw or any other way to withdraw the pattern so I won't show this side, but uh, this will be a repeat of what you just saw as far as uh, ramming it. And I will want to get particularly a lot of pressure down in here because that's uh, three inches as far as the flask uh, depth is concerned plus an extra three quarters of an inch. Sometimes you don't pack it real hard here. You get kind of a loose uh, uh, sand down in there which is rough and that will defeat the whole purpose of the, of the whole darn thing because this cavity here is the only thing that really matters in the end. Both sides are rammed. Now I'm going to roll the entire flask upside down. Notice the pins are pointing down now. In a moment they'll be pointing up and I'll try to explain why I'm doing that. It's not necessarily something you're going to do uh, on a regular basis but I, I have a reason for it and that is to avoid shrinkage. So see if you can follow me on that then as soon as I flip it over I'm gonna take the two 
halves of the flask apart and uh, pre prepare to uh, uh, remove the pattern. The two halves of the flask are separated and something uh, surprising happened here. I didn't expect the pattern to, to stay on this side. I expected it to be over here and I would have to withdraw it from, from this side. So uh, I will attempt to take that off. I tapped it ever so lightly on four sides with the handle of a screwdriver to, to loosen it. I'm hoping that it's not hung up in there. It shouldn't be. And then I still have to cut my uh, sprue and my gate. Now, let me try to explain why I'm doing it this way. This is a rather heavy, thick cross-section. There is going to be some shrinkage. I don't care if the shrinkage is on this side, because that's irrelevant. I did not want the shrinkage to be on the side of the cavity, because it would ruin it. It would ruin the shape of the cavity. Do you follow what I mean? So that's why I flipped the whole thing upside down. I could have done that in another manner too. That is by putting my pattern draft on this piece in the opposite uh, direction. More than one way to skin a cat. I cut the sprue, ran a gate. Now the reason I didn't put the sprue closer, and it should be closer as far as I'm concerned, is because uh, in using a tapered sprue cutter, Sometimes it distorts the sand and could literally push that wall that way a little bit since the pattern isn't in there, isn't uh, in place. I expected the pattern to, to be uh, in place. And I probably should go with a, a larger riser and a, and a very thick um, gate to try to control the shrinkage. But let's just see what happens with this. And I blew both halves off nicely with uh, the old bellows. And I'm going to put it together. chunk of aluminum in there from the last time or from many times ago. It is now ready to pour. Why didn't I wear two gloves? Why? Because hindsight has 20-20 vision. And I'm going to leave it right on the bench to pour. I'd rather bring the, uh, the hot metal over here and pour it than lift that heavy mold on the floor and carry it outside because I actually do my melting right outside the, the garage door here. Also when I go to break it open or shake it out and a little while after I pour it, it's in the correct uh, place. It's on, it's on the molding bench so the sand can fall through. Now a major mistake I made was using that real slick molding board because it's like working on ball bearings. Well, I got the Johnson furnace running. You've seen this in many other videos. Actually, it's a heat treating furnace, but I use it with a steel ladle or a steel uh, crucible, rather. And it takes 110 volt electricity and natural gas. See that garden hose there? I hope that's up to code. Now, you can't be careful enough when you're doing foundry work and, and metal. You, I will wear uh, uh, long gloves, uh, long pants, um, uh, hard shoes and uh, a full face mask just in case anything spatters. Now that'll take about a half hour and uh, see how green the grass is but it's only 50 degrees here now and uh, our freeze date here in this part of northern Illinois is May 10th so uh, they do not recommend tomatoes or any delicate plants in the ground until May 10th and that's still eight days away but all of a sudden spring will truly be here get back to you in a few minutes see my, my furnace is on wheels so I can wheel it around those are my ingot molds for the extra and I like to work over this grate here so the concrete doesn't pop remember concrete can pop if you spill metal on it it draws the moisture out and there's a minor explosion on the surface and it throws shards of concrete so that's another thing to be very careful of. You're better off to work on sand, but I don't have any dry sand. 
getting ready to pour. Soup's hot. Took quite a bit of metal. It's been about 15 minutes and it's really too soon, but I just can't wait and it's going to smoke like crazy when I open it up. See, the smoke is the oil burning out of the Petrobon sand. Just a little bit of a dip there, can you see that? Which I anticipated. A little bit of shrinkage on the top. This is the fun part, if it's successful, I mean. Now, I'm not going to put it in water, I'll just let it cool naturally out here in the air. This is the other half of the mold, the other plaster half without the pins on it, so I'm using just a regular molding board there, not that slick thing that, which was nothing but trouble, but yet it had the holes in there as I showed you that I drilled for those alignment pins, so uh, I'm ready to go here and this will be an exact uh, duplication of what I showed you earlier, so I'm not going to cover any of this and the next time you see this, it will be made of aluminum. This is the second one, and this is poured about a half hour ago. At first glance it looks good, still pretty hot. Not that much shrinkage on this side compared to what I expected. Oh, ooh, so hot. Still a, quite a heavy casting, there's a lot of aluminum there. Well, let's go downstairs and take a look at uh, and summarize here what I've done. Let's have a quick review of what I have done and where I'm going made a wooden pattern split pattern that's positive from that I made the plaster molds those were negatives then from here I went to this it's not I don't show it here I can't show it the sand mold those were broken out and destroyed so that was a positive and then we're back to a negative really the finished product or not quite finished but close to finished and then a positive positive negative positive negative positive is that clear as mud now I'll take these over to the bandsaw cut off the gates fairly close to the casting put them back in the garage melt them for some other project the gates are cut off. Now I'll still take this to, to the big belt sander and knock this uh, flashing off here. 
and I'll run this up against the belt sander. I, I did scrape it on there, try to get a true surface. I can't do it with this side because of these uh, alignment pins, and I did take just the tips off of Madonna, Madonna's bra. Now you can see there's a little sinkhole right there. But I don't care. It doesn't matter. It would matter a lot if that sinkhole was on this side. That's why I went to a big fuss as far as rolling that mold over, if you recall that. Pretty good finish in here. I don't think that I need to uh, do any hand work in there, but I'll pour a lead hammer and see what it looks like. But as far as, look at the finish on this uh, hammer, you know, it's, it's not very good at all. And so, you know, it just doesn't matter. Although pride of workmanship is a factor. I wish I would have had uh, located this a little farther over because my my gate uh, for pouring is going to come right down here, but it'll be smaller. It'll be more like uh, like that, and then the handle coming in from this side. About five pounds of castings there for the two of them. The alignment pins are pretty good. I can I have a little bit of rocking there. So that's why I'm going to file this and dress that and see if it makes any difference. Um, but I'm not able to move this up and down much. That's a good fit. Same way sideways here. So the alignment pins I think are accurate and will do their job. In a moment I'm going to take the two molds uh, over to the milling machine, clamp them together in the vise and uh, drill the hole. And of course it will be halfway in one and halfway in the other I hope. But uh, to find this center line, and not that it really matters, because this is just uh, the sprue or the pouring gate, but I, I did take my hermaphrodite caliper, which I seldom use, and uh, off of this one corner here, I swung a little bit of an arc. Same thing here. And it uh, gave me the center. I center punched that, probably with no need, but then I made myself a center line with this little square and if you look closely can you see the layout lines I'm gonna drill a half inch hole all the way in might be just a little out of focus and then I'll come back with a three-quarters drill and only come down to where this cross line is If I can find my big pipe reamer, I might also cone shape a little bit on the top there. Not sure where I put that thing. Okay, I'm going to the bridge port. I did mill the top of this half so it will be even with the other half when I put them in the vise together. But the reason I only got one in here right now, I'm using my edge finder here to uh, locate the edge of this. Then I will zero out the digital readout at which time I will stop put the two halves together in the vise here and then I know where the center is in the Y axis and then I have a lay layout mark to find it on the X axis So I will move in 250. I'm watching the digital readout, which you cannot see, but when I get it on 250, which I am now, then I'm truly on the edge of the work, which will be uh, really on the edge of both pieces when I get them assembled.